We're not into bad game territory. Yet. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to another Bundle Banter. That's right, Fanatical rocking it out once again with the Bento Box 3 bundle, and they actually did come through with my affiliate link, so if you want to buy this bundle, check that out, I can get a little kickback from it. Now, I don't remember any of the first Bento Box or second Bento Box bundles, personally, but that's mostly because these are not my type of games necessarily. I'm not huge on the anime scene, I mean I can get into some shows, but gaming anime stuff is, is not really my style. But who knows, this bundle might be the one to turn everything around, so let's take a look at what games they've included. We've got Dead or School, Cat Quest, Chaos Code, New Sign of Catastrophe, Shyness, The Lightning Kingdom, Arcana Heart 3, Love Max! With like five exclamation points. <laughs> X-Blaze Code Embryo, X-Blaze Lost Memories, and Ninja Showdown. I'm a little skeptical going into this because I've never heard of any of these except for Shyness, uh, which was on Kickstarter. But I don't even know how the game turned out, so let's jump in. We'll take a look at each of these games individually and I can give you my thoughts on them. Dead or School! Anime hack and slash title with big titty anime girls fighting off hordes of zombies in the Japanese subway system. Now that sounds like a fan service game of the highest caliber, but it actually ends up holding its own and being pretty fun in its own right. The sexual overtones can be downright oppressive at times, particularly when the game decides it wants to shove endless cutscenes or walls of text into your face. There isn't any actual hentai in the game, but there are plenty of lewds. Whether that's a positive or a negative is completely up to you. Anyhow, once you get into the actual action, that is where the game really starts to shine. The controls are smooth and combat feels satisfying, at least for the first few levels. Things start to get super brutal later on, with very tanky enemies that will decimate your health in a single hit. Guess it's time to get good. The weapon variety is pretty sweet too. Katanas, chainsaws, rocket launchers, shotguns. It kind of feels like the director of this game just threw in whatever he felt like and somehow it all worked out. I wouldn't have picked this game for myself, but it was a nice surprise from what I assumed about it. I thought it was going to be another poorly made anime titty game. Instead, I got to beat up zombies with a satisfying combat system. Well played. Cat Quest, an action RPG stuffed with cat puns. Again, probably not my first choice for a game, but I'm once more surprised about how well it all comes together. I mean, the main character being a cat is kind of incidental, aside from all the puns and shit. If you change the cat into, like, a wildebeest, it wouldn't really make a lick of difference. It's a well-made action RPG, with a strange choice for a protagonist. Combat is completely skill-based, and the game doesn't try to wall you off from beefier content. If you want to delve into that badass dungeon that you aren't supposed to yet, then, well, you can. And if you survive, you'll definitely have the EXP gains to show for it. The combat system's pretty simple, but it does at least feature a spell system, so it wins some bonus points there. It's got kind of a flash game feel to it, and I can't see myself sitting down with this for hours on end, but it's a nice little time killer if you've got an hour or so that you want to waste. It's also a good game for kids. It's good for the kids if it's good for the adults! My daughter would surely have a blast with this game for as long as I'd allow it. Cat Quest has a wholesome feel that makes me feel safe sending my kid off on an adventure with it, and that isn't something that I can wholeheartedly state very often, especially within the confines of this bundle, with the exception of maybe shyness. Chaos Code, new sign of catastrophe. Hey, Arc System Works, we was just talking about you, bro. Arc System Works published a ton of the Guilty Gear titles, which I absolutely raved at in the last bundle banter video on the Kingslayer 2 bundle. How does Chaos Code stack up to Guilty Gear? I mean, it doesn't, really. <laughs> the visuals are sorta ugly, the story's pretty stupid, and the dialogue and voice acting are pretty cringe even for anime fighting game standards. That doesn't really mean the whole game is a lost cause, however, because Chaos Code does have it where it counts. And in the end, what really matters to me is one single question. Is this game fun? And if I'm honest with myself, I gotta say, well, yeah. Chaos Code is indeed an enjoyable fighting game. The controls are smooth and responsive, there are plenty of cool moves that you can chain into even cooler combos, 
The stages themselves are probably the high point of it all. They feel really vibrant and alive. I love the cast of characters. It might even be wider than the cast of characters within Guilty Gear. Do you want to be a macho chef? We got that. How about a girl Cthulhu? We got that too. The variety of characters is pretty staggering and they all feel decently different. The net code is also pretty okay, if you can find a match, but you'll probably need to join a Discord server and hunt someone down in order to snag one. Luckily, people that play this game are still indeed out there. Shyness, the Lightning Kingdom. JRPG with some real-time combat. Unfortunately, the combat feels pretty wonky. It isn't completely broken, but I mean it just feels the slightest bit off. It's also an extremely short game for a JRPG which might actually be an act of mercy considering the relatively mediocre story. I mean, the story's at least passable until you reach the final boss. There have been no hints really of a final boss. You'll find him without actually knowing that this is the end of the game, but once you win, it is. There are so many loose ends and questions that I ended up being more frustrated than anything else. The entire time you're playing Legend of Zelda, people all around you are whispering about Ooh, Ganon, Ganon, Ganondorf this, Ganondorf that. So when you finally get to him, it makes him seem larger than life. You know, you, you feel like you really have your job cut out for you. The end boss in this game, he's basically nameless. I didn't realize he was the end boss at all until he died. <laughs> and that, that doesn't do much. The game goes out with a whimper. So did they run out of time or money? I mean, perhaps so, considering this is a game from Kickstarter. I have to be a little impressed by the world building and the length of the game considering a budget of just 140000 But despite that, it feels extremely shallow for an RPG, and probably could have used a couple more months in the oven at least. You won't find a giant world to explore, you won't find yourself grinding for hours on end. This is an RPG that is nice to look at, but it's pretty linear. The combat system has some good ideas, but they aren't executed to the extent that they could be. Is it a bad game? Not really, but it's just like a bowl of oatmeal, you know? It'll fill you up, but you'll forget that you ate it because the experience was overall bland and flavorless. Arcana Heart 3 Love Max! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Wow! <laughs> Arc system works again. Surely this is the game that will knock Guilty Gear for a loop, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I will grant it, it is more mechanically interesting than Chaos Code, but definitely doesn't beat Chaos Code in the visual department, and both of them are below Guilty Gear in every way. Yeah, yeah, cute anime girls, but you know what? I'm a fucking 32-year-old man. I'm basically over it. The stages here are boring, the moves are all different combinations of the exact same sparkly shit, and to top it all off, the characters are the most boring thing of all. Unless you like 2D titties, I mean, I'm not here to judge. But if I can choose between an interesting cast of characters, or this, I'm going to take Macho Chef and Girl Cthulhu every time. Okay, enough harping on the aesthetic. I did say that the mechanics were more interesting, and that wasn't a lie. There are 23 elemental arcana to enhance your attacks. Multiply that by 23 characters, and you're at 529 unique combinations. Pretty impressive. But what I find more impressive is the homing system. Yes, a homing system in a fighting game. So you start a combo, blast a bitch into the air, and then hit the homing button to catch up with them and continue the combo. The flight mechanics give arcana heart a very different feel. It's just too bad that none of the characters feel truly different or unique. At least in my opinion. X-Blaze Code Embryo! What's that? You want more Arc System Works? Wish granted! But it isn't a fighting game because you didn't specify... <laughs> it's like the monkey's paw of game bundles. Sim Salabim! Ha! You got a visual novel. But it isn't a completely terrible visual novel if I'm being quite honest. Still, you should really only bother with it if you're interested in the Blaze Blue fighting game series. I am not. x -Blaze Code Embryo still fiddles around with some interesting ideas for a visual novel game. The story progression and which ending you get are all based around news articles that you read on your PDA. You can even set it to just auto-read, which basically turns this visual novel into a movie of sorts. Granted, it's probably the worst movie that you're ever going to watch in your entire life, but... I gotta at least tip my hat at the option. 
For a company that makes fighting games with story plots thinner than wet toilet paper and about equally as interesting, it was fun to watch them attempt to tackle a visual novel. ARK certainly did better than I thought they would, but in the future, I'd encourage them to stick with what they're best at. x -Blaze, Lost Memories. Remember x -Blaze Code Embryo? I mean, I hope you do. I literally just talked about it. You didn't fall asleep, did you? Oh, look at that. Pete is still asleep. Well, I guess I can't blame him. I won't bother waking him up either, because x -Blaze Lost Memories isn't particularly worth waking up for. At least this game has you collecting memory fragments instead of staring at a PDA reading news articles, so... I guess we're moving in the right direction? At this point, we should have a game that is almost perfectly playable in just a couple of centuries. Once again, this game is really only recommended for people who are into Blaze Blue and want to get the inside scoop about the lore behind it. For an outsider like myself, it's all meaningless tripe. Characters without names are introduced solely as a plot device. At least the previous entry managed to develop their characters somewhat. Not into anything extremely interesting or enjoyable, but I definitely like those bland gray mush piles a lot better than these bland gray mush piles. I'm sure there are some people out there who love both Blaze Blue and visual novels, and for them this experience will probably be fantastic, but I really couldn't find the appeal. I tried, but I just couldn't. Ninja Showdown! Ninja games usually fall into one of two categories. An amazing experience that lets me feel like a bona fide ninja, or a piece of trash that baited me into picking it up because it had ninja in the title. There is no in-between here. So, which one of these categories does Ninja Showdown fall into? After those x plays games, you might be having some doubts about this bundle. I know I was. But fortunately, Ninja Showdown falls squarely into the category of awesome ninja game that makes me feel like I have real ultimate power! The gameplay is tough as nails, twitchy as all hell, and if you can get a couple of friends in there to help you out, you're bound to have a real good time. I mean, sure, you can cooperate like a couple of pansies, or you can do what real ninjas do best and get in the ring for a fight to the death. Twitchy gameplay, hordes of enemies, plenty of weapons, and not just ninja crap weapons like swords and shurikens either. You ever seen a ninja blow somebody up with a missile? Well, neither had I until Ninja Showdown, and it was fucking awesome. It's also available on Switch, and I'd love to have it there, but it's $15, so this game is staying on my desktop. I ain't paying $15 for this game, but in this bundle, it is a fantastic addition for a low, low price. So overall, what do I think of this bundle? It's decent. It falls into the pretty okay category. Not great, not awful. It's, it's pretty okay. I really like Dead School, Cat Quest, Chaos Code, and Ninja Showdown. Shyness and Arcana Heart are kind of middling, and then the two x plays games are basically trash in my opinion. So we've got four nice games, two middling games, two bad games. That makes this bundle worth picking up in my opinion. For only $6, you're basically bound to have a pretty good time with it, even if you're only picking it up for one single game. I don't generally do that, but if you wanted to, I, I wouldn't blame you, especially if it's Dead or School or Ninja Showdown, because those are both really, really good. The highlights of this bundle, as far as I'm concerned. So while Bundlefest started out strong, they've experienced a brief dip with the uh, Bento Box 3 bundle, but it's not a huge dip. We're not into bad game territory. Yet. Until we uh, cover the Enchanted Bundle, which, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's going to be a fun one. I do recognize some of those games, and I am not looking forward to it. These games I didn't recognize at all, and I was pretty happily surprised for the most part. So yeah, whatever you decide to do with this bundle, please let me know. If you decide to pick it up, please use my link in the description and or the pins comment. That would be massively appreciated. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe on this video if you didn't enjoy. We've also got other links in the description to Twitter and Discord and Patreon. You can watch me shitpost on Twitter. We got some giveaways going on in the Discord. And of course, I'd always like to thank my patrons, Nico the Legend, Radimus Cisco, Damon Darkstar, and Lady Nix. Thank you guys for helping keep me motivated, since YouTube ad revenue is kind of a joke for a channel of my size. <laughs> I'd probably still do this for free, but if I could make a living at it, God, that would be such a dream come true. And those four people are helping me to make it happen. So bless each and every one of my patrons. Goodness. 
the best of the best. Anyways, friends, we're gonna get into the Enchanted Bundle pretty shortly here, and then I think we're gonna have uh, Humble Monthly coming pretty shortly after that, so... Gameplay, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna get it on the channel again eventually, but for people who are waiting around for that, I'm sorry, you just gotta keep waiting. This bundle fest has really got me all mixed up. But I appreciate your patience, I appreciate you listening with me this far, and I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here now. So, once again, friends, this has been Bundle Banter, the Bento Box 3 bundle. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye bye